All right, so um, my name is Amber Chamberlain and I am the RSU 19 pre-K through four tech integrator. Um, and so I'm going to be doing just the introduction for um, the robotics and programming. So really just the, the indies and bolts. Um, and I am going to be trying to switch my screen back from like screen share to like some things to view. And then I also have my document camera on to kind of show some things working. So hopefully that will go smoothly. Um, we will see. So I'm gonna go ahead and share. Just need access to that. <laughs> you should be good now. Perfect. Oh, Amber, it muted you. You ran into this issue the other day. I think that's better. <laughs> yes, yes, we can hear you now. Okay. Um, I don't use Zoom as much as Google Meets, so it'll be a little bit of <laughs> learning as we go. Um, all right, so my name is Amber Chamberlain. I am the K through four technology integrator for RSU 19, if you weren't here for that. Um, I do have my email there. Um, I will give that again later. Um, today we are going to just be doing the introduction to Sphero Indies and the Bolts. Um, so we're really gonna be looking at unpacking the kits, kind of preparing for those first initial classes and um, kind of just starting that dive in. Um, and then next time we'll look into more of that programming side. Um, I did also include um, the online resources links in these slides. Um, and Karen, I think I gave you those if you don't mind putting them into the chat, the PDF version of these slides. All right, so in your kits, um, you would have received um, or will be receiving um, these things. So it comes with a classroom tote. It's a big carrying case. Um, it's pretty hefty. Um, a charging case that fits all eight of your indies, eight student cases, um, eight sets of 15 beginners programming challenge cards, um, the in-depth standards aligned educator guidebook, eight sets of 20 durable color tiles, and then two sets of 30 color tiles, and then there's like little tape stickers. Um, I know storage was a question that's come up before. And so these are some of the options that I'm using currently for storage. Um, I do have one of the larger AV carts and I am able to fit the indie case on the bottom and the Sphero case up at the top and then still have that center for some of my materials, my classroom resources and um, the tiles that I'm not using. Um, that's really convenient because I have two floors that I um, go to. I could carry the case, um, but like I said, it's a little bit heavy, so it's, it's a little difficult, so this makes it a little bit easier. And then I also found that this um, School Smart, like the big rolling carts, work really nicely. I can fit all eight of my cases, and it even fits the charging case if I needed it, um, which makes it nice if teachers are checking it out. So those are two options that I found, and I think that there have been others that have been shared before. Um, so as far as preparing for class, um, this was. Um, the thing that I thought was most important for the indies is just kind of getting ready. Um, so I am going to stop sharing so I can kind of show you some of those materials. All right. Um, so I did find this guide, but to be really helpful when st first starting looking at indie, um, it's really easy read. Um, and as an integrator, I felt comfortable sharing this with the teachers if they really wanted to do a lesson in here. Um, it talks a lot about like it introduces Indy, what it is for, kind of goes over that computational thinking and what that is and what that looks like in the classroom. And it really um, makes it easy to um, like integrate. So it talks to you about how um, like 
algorithms can be found in everyday tasks like making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or trying to tie your shoes. So that was kind of a really good way for teachers who may not be as comfortable with computational thinking to see that in the classrooms. Um, it does the whole getting started with Indy in the kit, but it also has some really great lessons in it as well. Um, and it has the overview, the objectives, vocabulary, everything that a teacher would need um, if they're feeling comfortable. And I go in and I'll do the first couple lessons and usually by the second or third lesson that I'll do, teachers are feeling, oh, I could do this in my classroom because um, Indy is very low risk um, and high ceiling. So there's a lot you can do with it. Um, we did talk about that charging case um, on one of the very first lessons that I go in and I talk to the students about the indie. They always love to see what's in the yellow case. Um, so I call this case their home because I am using this with pre-K through second grade. Um, and I say this is where Indy goes to charge and he goes in there with his family. So this is a nice way to charge all of the indies together. Um, and then they come right out and, and they can be placed right back in. Um, and then that just plugs in to an outlet there, so you can charge them all together, which is really convenient. You only have to worry about one cord. Um, and then it also comes with the color tiles. I like to number my baggies, um, and I have the corresponding number on my cases. You don't have to. I just like to be organized that way. Um, inside, I actually kept the bags that it came with because when I'm not using certain color tiles in a classroom, I will put them in here to store them. Um, so for example, my first lesson, I only use the green and yellow tiles um, because again, we're talking about kindergarten, first grade students. And if you give them a whole lot of color tiles at once, they're gonna get a little bit overwhelmed. It might look a little bit crazy as they're trying to kind of explore, navigate through all of those tiles. So I do take out only the tiles that I'm going to be using for that lesson, um, and I store the rest in here. Um, and it also comes with, and I don't think it mentioned it, but it comes with these stickers as well. Um, I have not used them yet just because I see so many classrooms. Um, the only stickers that I have used are the stickers to number them. And I also number the car as well. Um, again, it's not something you have to do. I just like to have that as my organizational piece there. Um, so I used those stickers for that, but it might be fun for students to kind of put those stickers on. They do come off pretty easily. Um, so this is the case and it gives you eight student cases to go with your eight indies. Um, I call this, like I call the house, I call this their, their garage. It's for their one indie that they have. Um, and um, like I've stated, I only put in what the students would need for that lesson. So um, this is made for that first lesson. It has those yellow and greens and then just the indie. <clears throat> At the end of the day or my last indie lesson, I do have the students, instead of putting them back in the case, I do have them put them back in the um, house in the charging um, piece of that. So that's kind of my little bit of setup of how I prepare. So I make sure that all of those are ready. I go ahead and I, I um, do that first lesson, which is all about making observations on Indy. So on the first day we meet Indy, um, we explore, we make some observations about what Indy looks like. What do we feel on Indy? A lot of the students will notice that the like front wheels are hard where the back wheels are a little bit more flexible. Um, they also notice the parts like the, you know, the LED lights at the top and the speaker, um, the color sensor, which is a really important part to point out. They'll notice the metal pieces, which we can say is their chargers, the power button. Um, it also has LED eyes. Um, and when they notice something like the LED, I say lights, um, I do give them that language that it is the LED light and it will shine. And so when we are watching it or making observations for the first time, we're gonna watch to see what the light is doing. Um, we're also going to listen to see what sounds we hear. Um, and then we're gonna watch to see what kind of movement it's programmed to do. So Indy is really special it, um, because it is really made for that entry level and it's created for screenless coding, which means, or screenless programming, which just means that 
the students don't need any screens to get into to work. It's already been pre-programmed um, to do certain things on certain color tiles. Um, and so I'm gonna see if I can I'm gonna switch this here. I did practice this, but it looks different here. <laughs> um, to switch my screen here. Well, now I'm not sure. There we go. Okay, <laughs> so I knew I'd figure it out. All right, so I just hit the power button, it turns on, makes a little noise, and I did just set up um, a quick little um, path. Um, for it to navigate on so you can see how it works if you haven't tried it yet. <laughs> so as you can see, it was already programmed to do certain things. So on green, it went straight, on blue, it turned, and then on purple, it celebrated, um, which is their favorite and also my favorite color tile um, to see. Yeah, I agree, purple is absolutely the best tile and the kids go nuts for it every time. Um, it's really fun because the lesson that we do purples in, it's a stop and it's a just special stop. So they have no idea what's coming. And when we do it together, they are like, oh, they like cannot believe that it does something so cool. <laughs> um, so that is just kind of um, one of like a basic path, but students go crazy for figuring out how these things work. And so the lessons that I do are all really um, about them investigating and trying to figure out how it works. Um, and we scaffold it along the way. So I'm gonna go back to that presentation. Show the video. You're muted again, Amber. I think when it goes, it goes back and forth, it mutes you. I'm gonna have to try to remember that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so the next one is a video um, in this students. This is one of the very first lessons and it is a first grade classroom. So we have done some pattern work with just the greens and yellows to figure out what happens with them. We've made the observations. Oh, we also talked about rules and safety. So usually I say Indy is new to our classroom and so we need to teach him how to be safe and responsible. Um, and so a little bit of classroom management tips is we do like three, two, one, Indy up, and they all put Indy up in the air. Um, that helps because I know they can listen to directions and Indy's not doing any movements. Um, and so on this one, they'd already done some practice with their patterns. And so they were kind of coming up with some other questions. So one of the students had asked me, will Indy go in a circle? And so instead of saying an answer, I said, I don't know, let's, Try it out. So this is what they did. <laughs> so you can see how hard they are trying to get it to go in a circle, but what they notice is it keeps turning that same direction that it had started in. And so they were able to, on their own, kind of figure out how those how those work and knowing that Indy doesn't see what's in front of him, he can only go the direction he was first programmed to go. Um, and then here are some other students who are trying to experiment with distance. So they're counting the tiles on their floor to see how far they can get Indy to go in the classroom. Um, and I think the most was like 20. And so they were very excited to get that to go. And then we also had students who were like, what if we put the tiles together um, and our two groups tried to get it to go all the way across. So that was pretty um, fun as well. And then I also have, I don't know if I'll show it because I only have one screen. Here recording. So this is my son. He is in preschool, so he's a preschool student, um, and he's just trying to figure out how um, Indy works. So he was using it for the first time. It was one of the very first times I'd taken it out um, to kind of experiment with it.
Um, so you can see how the students um, are, in, or my son, are just trying to figure out which step goes next in the in the code or in the algorithm. Um, so they're really doing that computational thinking on their own. Um, and it's really exciting to see. Um, so here are some lessons that I have done. So this was lesson that I took right out of the um, book, the guidebook, and I just put it up um, for the students to kind of see their I can statements, their objectives, and then think about some questions and also make some connections to some real world experiences. So we made some connections to our lesson on stops with stop signs and different signs on the road. They made a connection to yellow signs usually mean to use caution or to slow down. And that helped them make a prediction with the red stop sign. Um, and then um, these are some pattern paths that I created that they use to kind of just scaffold through that stop and um, go and go slow. And then the um, we also have the create your own and the challenges which kind of make that real world connection again. And so I'm gonna stop here um, for Indy um, to see if there are any questions. I couldn't quite hear the audio, but I'm sure it was cute as all get out, so I'm sure. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, he, um, he for um, the students who were going around in a circle, they just kept saying, it just keeps going straight. Um, and then with my son, he was really thinking about what was going to happen next. Um, and he kind of just led me through that. I didn't really have to do any of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Great. All right. So any other questions with Indy or, or anything that you have done or sh would like to share with Indy? before I move into Bolt. So the oldest group that I've used Indie with right now is um, second grade. Well, we've done family events, so all the students have gotten a chance to kind of put their hands on Indie. Um, right now, we're doing Indie in we, with second grade. We've done all of the introductions, so we're moving into um, that programming, which I'm going to talk a little bit about um, in the next one, because Indie can move into that next level of starting programming. And it's very simple, tile-based um, picture coding. So the oldest I've used it with was second. I know that Susie Simmons mentioned on one of your orientation meetings that she had used it with middle school or high school. I'm not sure which mm -hmm. level, but she was like, I was shocked how like excited that grade level. She's like, I was just kind of trying it just because I had them and they were totally into it. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, we um, have. And... Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, we have high, high school kids that have played with them mostly for the same reason. Um, as Martha mentioned, they actually help younger kids and do video sessions. The only difference, the biggest difference, I guess, is just the amount of time, you know, before they get bored with them. I mean, they'll play with them for mm -hmm. like a period or so and then they can probably move on. Mm -hmm. And um, even the teachers have a lot of fun with them. So if I do pre professional development or if I have like a staff meeting um, where I have a couple minutes to kind of plug in technology, this is something that really hooks teachers because they can have fun with them. Um, and um, I have also thought about ways that I can kind of tie in my oldest group right here is fourth grade. So how can I get them on board with maybe even doing some of that programming and then having the younger grades test out that programming and make those new observations all over again to see what happens now that, that they've done that and kind of do some partner work with it. So I thought that would be really neat. And I also thought that it'd be a really great way to introduce looping with my third grade students. Um, because it's kind of a challenge to make that loop and then to see it, to see what happens when that loop is going over, that code is going over and over again. So it's a really good visual way for them to see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, great for, for right now, for me, for K through second, third grade, and then but it's really kind of tie into anything depending on what you do with it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move into some with um, some work with the Sphero Bolt. Um, 
we're kind of going to go through that same little process of unpacking the case, um, using the app a little bit, connecting and programming in um, lessons and activities. Um, we are going to try to keep it at the basics um, today for just that intro. And um, this is, um, I have noticed um, my teachers will say this one's a little bit more um, unfamiliar to them, but once they get started, um, it's a lot of fun. The, the kids love it um, and it can really tie in and be integrated in a lot of different ways. Um, so let's see, I think I'm going to go ahead and do that unpacking. So with this, um, oops, I don't know. too many things that I have open right now, <laughs> sorry. So I am going to, let me see. All right, so the bolt comes in this um, nice rolly case, which is really convenient um, because otherwise it'd be really heavy to carry around. Um, the rolling case also has all of the charging cradles connected to it, so it's really easy to connect right into an outlet and charge all of the bolts at once. Again, which is really helpful because you don't have to worry about all of the wires for each cradle that charges the bolts. Um, when charging, you just have to make sure there's um, a little switch on the front here. So just make sure that you flick that up and that it is Blinking means charging. If it's a solid green, it means that they're charged. Uh, also with these, one thing that I've noticed is even though it says it can charge with the protectors on, so the protectors look like um, this, they're just like a little flexible case here. Um, it, it does charge with them on. I prefer to have them off. I feel like it charges a little bit better. Um, I also go through and kind of just make take them off the charger and put them back on every morning when I go to charge it. And I found that that helps because sometimes it doesn't automatically like rotate into that charging position. Um, so that's been really helpful. I've also found that if I bring the charger with me to a classroom, it's really helpful because sometimes if I have difficulty trying to connect to a bolt, if I plug in the case, and kind of snap that charging on and off, it's really helpful um, to help with that connection. So I don't know if it reboots it, it, it does help with that connection as well. So, um, it also has some getting started tips in here. Um, I keep all of the protectors in there, but it also comes with um, some tape, um, some stickers, and um, some protractors. So, the stickers just kind of look like this and they might make a good like little prize for students um, or reward or and um, the protractors are they look like this they come with a centerpiece in them and we call them protractors or compasses and um, I think these are very helpful to introduce to students as soon as you start talking about roll, um, the roll blocks. I didn't introduce them the first time when we did the roll blocks, um, but I would be doing that next time. So the next time when I introduce this, I would also introduce these in at least the two points of zero in 180 and then kind of add on from there as we're rolling and figuring out how those, how those angles or degrees on that protractor work. On the other side, it also has um, clock time. Um, so there's a lot of ways that you could probably integrate that too, and even that spin within that clock. So I haven't done anything with that yet. I'm still kind of thinking about how I would use that. Um, these also make, um, can make good um, targets as well. So the book does give you ones that you can print out, um, but these can be good targets. Um, the only thing with that is that it does throw off their aim a little bit when they bump into it. Um, and this is that tape. It is in centimeters and meters. So that's really helpful when they're coding um, or programming. They can kind of think about how far it's going and how fast it's going. Um, when you get into the middle um, level, they could start thinking about ratio um, and how fast that is going. Um, with my students, we kind of just test trial and error. Um, let's see. They also comes with the um, guidebook, again, it's really helpful, although I do like the online um, just as, 
as much. Um, again, that first lesson I go in and I talk about all the parts, but this is really helpful for that um, because I, I do not know all the parts in this here. So it was really helpful for me to have a guide to help me with that. Um, whereas it's a little bit easier with the indies, although I did have one of my students in first grade ask me about axles. Um, and so I, I had to think about that for a little bit because <laughs> um, they wanted to know how many axles were in it. <laughs> um, okay. um, and so this, this has been really helpful, the guides for both of those things. Um, our kits also do come with um, the craft pack, which has a variety of just crafting supplies. Um, in an after school group, we use the, the crafting supplies to help engineer. So that, steam, that engineer part of that steam, um, we did a bridge. And so it was a lot of fun to pull out the, the craft supplies and, and try to make something that would go with our bolt. Um, and then it also comes with um, the mat and activity cards. Um, so I'll show the mats in a second, but the activity cards um, for those, um, there is a space mat, a soccer mat, a uh, city mat, and a golf mat. And the activity cards um, just have like a challenge pretty much for the students. And I have taken a couple of these little challenges and turned them into a lesson. Um, after we've done the introduction. So it's been um, fun to do that. So we did this one actually, it's called Flight Plan. You see, I, these ones I haven't taken out, but. Um, so in this one, they do the space one, they start at the International Space Station. We had them cord, um, to map the coordinates of the different space stations or spacecraft on the map. And then they had to use their roll blocks and delay blocks um, to, to navigate to a couple of them. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and so, if I can pull those out so you can see what those look like in case you haven't seen them yet. And this is another like wow factor for the students. They have a lot of fun um, with these. Okay, so here is the space one here. Um, and you can see it um, has coordinates. I actually don't know if you can see, um, but it has coordinates um, like a battleship is what we talked about in my fourth grade class. So we could do the numbers on one side, the letters on the other. And on the other side of my space mat is the soccer. Um, the soccer has numbers on it. So you could do a lot of things around patterns. You could do um, simple addition, um, simple multiplication or division, um, and things, things like that. Um, so that's the soccer. And then we have the city, which is a lot of fun. The activity cards for that have a lot of great ideas. Um, I was thinking that this would be a great map to tie into storytelling or some ELA work. Um, and finally, on the other side of that is the mini golf, which um, our, my students have tried in fourth grade and they absolutely loved. Um, and you can see on this side, um, it has the X, Y coordinates and it has negative and positive numbers on there as well. Um, let's see. So that's, I think, all that comes in the kit. I think I got everything. <laughs> There's quite a bit that comes with it. Um, so then the next part after you've kind of unpacked your kit is just getting into the program. And so um, what you would need to do is um, uh, download the Sphero app. Um, so it's Sphero EDU. There's, there's actually three. So there's Sphero EDU, there's Sphero um, Play, and then there's the EDU Junior, which is for Indie. Um, the play is more so just driving. So if you had activities where they're just driving it around, um, you might use that play. Um, the EDU is where they actually go in and they do some coding so that they can program their robots or their Sphero bolts to do something. And so I am going to share again so you can see 
I do have mine open. Um, if I can do. All right. question. Can you hear me still? Oh, we see your video. Okay. Uh, Karen asks, when students using the mats, are they driving the bolt or coating the bolt? Um, so you could do either. I have had them code because they'd already done some introduction lessons, but I think it would depend on the way that you wanted to integrate the mats with the lesson or integrate the content with the spheros. Um, so I could see some opportunities, um, maybe for the younger grades too, where either they're using their draw to, to program um, instead of the code blocks or they're just driving um, to, so that way you can really hit the, the content um, and just kind of use this as a way to hit that content, if that makes sense. All right, so I ha wasn't able to test to see if this will work, um, but I'm hoping that you will be able to see how I log into the app. Um, I already have mine open, so I would click on the tealish blue Sphero EDU um, and when you log in for the first time, you'll click that teacher account and it will help you kind of set up that account part. Um, when you click into classes, so before you do your first class, you will want to um, make sure you have your students already on. Um, otherwise, it will ask for like their parents email address so you'll want to manage your classroom and get that all prepared before you go into your first class um so on here it takes you back to the website um and on this um this is where you'd manage those classes um you can see i already have mine um synced through google so that is one option it made it easiest for me um, to get all of the students that have already been connected um, because I have three schools that I go to. And so they're already connected through my Google Classroom and I was able to easily sync that. Um, you could also add a learner. Um, and when you do that, you could do new learner. Um, you could do, give them a username with their first name, their birthday, um, whichever class you want them to be in. Um, then you would give them a password and then save it that way. So that's another option. If they're not already in your Google Classroom. Um, on this part is, another, is where you can really kind of go into those um, students and see what they've been doing. You can also look at activities here um, that have been done by others and they have all activities. Um, you also have your activities which you can create and store here as well. Um, but most of the other things now are back in the app. So once you have your students signed in um, on that first day, I really liked to get them connected and just driving around. So to connect to a Sphero Bolt, what you would do is you would click up in this corner on the app um, and you would click Sphero Bolts. And then it would give you a list. So when I am connecting in the classroom, I call it the Harry Potter method and we just click randomly from the list. Um, it's much less time consuming to do it this way. Um, one of the bolts will light up and they will think it's their bolts that they've had every time anyways, because it turns purple the first time and that's what color it turned last time. <laughs> um, so um, I would do it that way, it makes it much easier and much quicker to to log on. Um, I did have one particular one I wanted to connect to. Um, it also will show the name of the bolt when you first um, take it off the cradle um, if it's been charging. And that's another way if you want it had a particular bolt that you'd use. So once connected, it would light up um, purple and then blue. Let's see if I can show you my connected bolts here. Um, okay. So, oh, it disconnected as soon as I left the app. <laughs> so, let's see. 
I'll go back to sharing. Um, so I can show you some more things on the app real quick. Okay. So let me connect again. Okay. So once connected, their LED matrix will light up. Um, and then they can go into drive to test it out. Um, what I will tell students is if they have the flexibility to turn their um, Chromebooks into a tablet, um, this is one of the times that I allow for them to do that. Um, if they are on, this works best for mobile devices um, like a tablet or a phone. So if they're already on one of those devices, it does make it a little bit easier. As you can see here, since mine's not in tablet mode, I would have to use my keys in order to drive it. Um, and I can make it go faster or slower using my arrow up and down button. And what's really important, the first time you talk to students is aiming it. Now, the first time that I did this, I did not realize that the little blue light that came on when you were aiming it was actually the tail light. Um, like the students, I thought that that little blue light would aim it in the direction you wanted it to go. So the first time I tried this out with the class, before having that understanding, we were all confused. Um, so what I tell them now is that that blue light is its butt. And they love that and that sticks with them and they will like tell their friends, oh, don't forget to turn the butt the right way because they feel like they can get away with saying the word butt. Um, so that makes it fun. And um, they can also change the color here, which they all like to do. I try to tell them to change it to a color that's not what somebody else in the classroom would have. That way they know which one's theirs once they get rolling around. Um, and then I have them drive it. Um, try to drive it to their partner and try to drive it back. So if they've aimed it correctly, they'll be able to do that. And let's see if I can in, stop sharing. Uh, Chris okay. just asked where you said the name of the bolt. Uh, when you take it off of the cradle, where is that displayed? Um, so it will display on the LED matrix and it will kind of come across um, as, you know, a uh, like ring code. So it'll be like SB, mine said SB5731, and it will slowly scroll across that LED matrix. And it will do it two times. <clears throat> All right. My, oh, and I forgot, I have to go back into my yeah. app. Connect again. <laughs> and five, three. Sorry about this part. All right, so there we go. It's been connected again. And then I can drive using my keyboard. All right, so this is just that simple. I'm just driving it all over, back and forth, all around the classroom. The kids get a kick out of that. And we like to say this is kind of that starting point. So this is just the fun of it. Um, but then we can really kind of dig in once we start the coding part of it. So then we can really get into it and program it to do exactly what we want it to do. And then I kind of play on that Harry Potter thing again. And I say, um, you know, just like it was magic, it seemed like magic when we were connecting to the Bluetooth, we're going to try to make it look like magic by playing a game of pass with our partner without us touching the bolts and without us touching our device. So that gets us into the roll program. And we're trying to figure out how to roll it to a partner and roll it back without touching the device. So really, they just have to learn how to use that roll roll block by programming it. And we'll, we'll dig into that a little bit more too next time. Uh, Martha asked about renaming, asked about renaming the bolts. Can you oh. rename them? Um, I haven't found where you can rename them. I wish that you could. I think that every time I see um, Keith where he can rename his, <laughs> it would be really nice to do that. But unfortunately, you can't. I have thought about um, maybe placing like a sticker or something on each bolt so that way I, I know which one it is. But it doesn't matter to the students really um, because their code is brand new every time they connect and start up their code again. So um, 
it doesn't really matter. Any other questions? I do have, I think, just a couple little, not videos, I don't think, but just a couple little um, things I can share for students that they were viewing. Muted again. Amber, you're muted. Okay. <laughs> um, so I forgot to say that um, I do also do partners with Indie and with Bolt. And with both, I do give them jobs and they're the same. So I have a navigator and I have a driver. The driver um, for Indie has, uh, has Indie and it does the driving, puts Indy on the tiles and um, place and moves in if it's on a stop. Um, the navigator is the person who's putting down the path. And with Bolt, we also have a navigator and we have a driver and they do a lot of switching. Um, the navigator is the person who's really observing the program that's been written and seeing what's happening. And they're talking to the driver to tell them what's happening. They'll tell the driver, um, oh, you need to aim it a little bit more to the right, or you have to turn your aim a little bit backwards. It's not quite going the right way. Um, and they'll also say things like, oh, make sure your roll is going at zero degrees and uh, um, things like that. So they'll they'll kind of talk to the driver and then they'll take turns. And the same with the Indy, they take turns on who's navigating and who's driving. Um, and so here um, they're using those mats. And then I do have a, just a little video of students. They were doing a maze challenge. So they created a maze that made their bolt say three, two, one, and then it took off. And then they used their, um, their protractor to help them to figure out which direction it would need to go through their maze. And so that was in third grade. And then I also included, if you do have this, um, the link for the Sphere resources, so their online link. And any questions or comments? I'd love to see how others are using them. All right. So I really wanted today to kind of be that like intro into it and kind of like see what we have, see what's available and kind of get our feet wet. And um, the next um, time I meet with um, whoever, if you're coming to the next one too as well, the advanced, it's kind of more that intermediate. So we're gonna really kind of dig into the indie and thinking about how we can get into the computers and use that for programming. And then kind of look at that programming a little bit more in depth with the Sphero. Um, and if you have them, maybe try some different things ourselves to see what, what's going on with that and how they work. All right. And so I have that Google form, a little exit ticket. Um, if you don't mind filling it out, it will help us kind of guide what's next and see how everybody's planning to use them. So thank you all for joining me <laughs> and hanging out with me while I try to figure out Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Amber. This is really helpful. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. All right. oh, oh, hang on. Amber, is the uh, permission open? Oh, um, it should be, but probably not. Let me look.